hello friends welcome back to code tonight in today's video we will see how to use redis cache in asp.net core so what we have here is a asp.net core application and we will see how we can implement redis cache into that to first in the uh, data operations from the database okay so uh, first of all what we will need is we have to install a nugget package in micro.extension.catching.stack exchange redis now you have to first install this package in your application and uh, after that what you have to do is because uh, this redis cache is basically a, a kind of third party tool which works as a cache okay so we have to download uh, one zip file i will provide you the link so from here you can download this uh, zip file and once you will download the zip file you can go to zip and there you will find the redis server.exe you have to run this exe in order to use redis uh, cache okay so once you double click on this then what will happen is it will start the uh, redis cache server so once the redis cache server is started it will tell about the port which will allow us to connect to redis cache and this is the port 6379 now coming back to the code part what we have to do is uh, we have taken one api controller here okay uh, so in the api controller uh, to demonstrate you demonstrate you how the cache works so i have taken one api here which is a like a normal api and it doesn't have the cache thing but then we have the other thing which actually have the cache implemented so basically how redis cache works is that we actually uh, checks that if anything is in the cache then we uh, use the data from the cache otherwise we stores the data inside the cache so here we are getting the list of the product and then uh, we are adding that inside the cache here so you can see cache dot set a sync here and you have to pass a key here which you will use to get or set the data okay so this is the key that we have passed and this is the data which you want to set in the cache now this is the options options basically have like how long the cache will hold so here we have passed one minute so that means that uh, if you like uh, uh, hit the same method uh, multiple times in a minute time then it will pick the data from the cache and if you hit the same method after one minute then it will be uh, again calling the database and getting the list okay so uh, here talking i will just show you one demo also okay so we will put a okay we will not put a breakpoint we will just go to postman so first of all we will just hit the method which doesn't have the cache so this is the method which doesn't have the cache and when we try to hit that method so you can see that it has taken 9.76 second without the cache okay now what we will do is we will use the method where we have applied the cache operation okay so this one now you will see that first time it can take a bit more time because in the first attempt it will first save the data inside the cache so if we just run this here okay so you can see uh, in the first step it will not find anything in the cache so you can see in the cache data it is showing null so because the first time it doesn't have the cache so what it will do is it will go in the else condition it will get the list okay and it will set the list inside the cache So here we are setting the 
category and the data here okay so so now this is the data now in the second time what we will do is we will uh, remove the debugger from here okay and you will see that this time it does not take up that much time because this time it will not go to the uh, um, database okay so this time it has got the data from the cache you can see the time here is in a millisecond while when we use the method for the first time it took almost nine seconds okay so this is how cache work that if it is in the cache then it will be taking less time to get the data okay now if we wait for one minute and after that we will hit the same api then it will again take some time because the cache will be expired now about this cache operation one thing you have to uh, take care of in the asp.net core is you have to go to startup class and here we have to uh, add the service for that is cache okay so here it will require uh, to set a uh, port in the configuration okay so we have taken that value from the app setting and in the app setting you can see we have set the server URL to 6379 port which is coming from um, here. So this is the default port so we will be using that one. Okay. So uh, the thing is if you close this um, server and you try to call the same API then you will get the error. So that is catchy basically depends on this. Uh, uh, application exe that we run in the background okay so without that it will not work so in the startup you have to pass the url uh, for the local host and the port uh, where it will um, st start the ready sketch server okay so this is the only thing that you have to do in the uh, services or startup.cs okay apart from that there is nothing done on the startup.cs and you have to just uh, I write the code here so the simple code is one for the setting the cache and the other is for getting the cache so if the get operation doesn't get anything that then it will just uh, set a new data in the cache otherwise it will pick the data from the cache and uh, return so on uh, this is how that is cache is used in sp.net core if you have any kind of confusion then you can comment on the video so thanks for watching guys and you can also get the code uh, let me tell you where you can get the code so you can go to cotonite.com this is our official website I'll, i will also provide you a direct link uh, in the video description so here if you will go down then you will be able to find here caching in ASP.NET Core using Redis Cache, you can open up this block. Here you will see all the code that we have just showed you in the video and uh, you can just download the code and uh, if you have any kind of issue then you can also comment here in the comment section. So thanks for watching guys and let us know the feedback. Thank you.